Do you lock people away, put them through a process or remove them from general society in order to help them? Do we lock people away? <laughs> you know, this is back to the compound idea, I suppose, is it? Um, well, definitely not. Obviously, um, myself and Mary live in a, a one bedroom uh, home, which we're actually doing this recording in. And uh, there's no area to lock anybody away in the home. And uh, myself and Mary sleep in a tent, so it doesn't have a lock on it anyway. So <laughs> there's no locks there. Uh, we live in a, a in a area here in Wilkesdale that that is on 40 acres. We have no fences. There's no way to control what people do. And to be honest, we feel quite strongly that if you need to lock a person up or cl or put them in a room just to get them to feel something, then there must be a lot of resistance in the person to feeling their own emotions. We would rather teach them how to desire to feel themselves, how to desire God, how to desire love, how to desire humility, how to want to learn, and, and just let them decide whether they want to do that themselves rather than try to force them through a process that we feel quite frequently is very counterproductive to their own progression towards God. Obviously, if, if any organisation or individual on this planet forces another person through some kind of process, they are automatically not working in harmony with the free will of the individual. It is far better to teach the person about the, how to, act, to use their free will correctly. Now, the only time when I believe it is, it is possible or sh a person should be restricted is when they are taking actions that are blatantly out of harmony with love and are, and are violent in their nature. Now, I've discussed this quite a lot in the discussions that I did about the gift of free will that are on the Divine Truth channel. And rather than go into all the circumstances in this particular answer, what I would like to do is encourage people to watch that video about the gift of free will. There are times when we may desire to restrict somebody else in terms of what they do. And when I say we, I mean we as a society may decide to restrict somebody because of what they are doing and the damage that they are wreaking violently on others. However, I do not feel that it is wise to restrict anybody with regard to the expression of their emotions unless that person themselves is already being controlled by another entity. And let me clarify that. If the person is being obviously controlled by a spirit and defined by medical profession today as psychotic in their behavior, then it would be wise to restrict the person until you could somehow work out what's going on. I'm not suggesting to medicate them. I'm suggesting to work out what's actually going on inside the person that causes them to allow another being, albeit a spirit, to control them and to help them work through the emotional issues as to why they allow this particular thing to happen, why they give up their free will. I believe that that is an essential part of their growth. So in answer to this question, I believe that it is not right to restrict a person's free will unless, one, they are acting violently and out of harmony with love towards society or other individuals. Under those circumstances, you would, as a society, determine to restrict their will and re-educate them in some way through the use of their will as to how to use their will in a more loving and, and more controlled manner. The second way in which a person would perhaps need their will restricted is if they were becoming psychotic in their behaviour, obviously being influenced by spirits or, or other entities, and, uh, and that particular person would need assistance to break the chain or the bond between the, themselves and that particular spirit entity. Now, I do not believe that exorcisms and other things that, uh, that Christian religions promote help with those things. There are very simple ways to remove people from the um, influence of other people, in, and particularly from the influence of spirits, and that is by simply sharing the truth with them 
and, and helping them take personal responsibility for their own lives. And I feel that this can be done in a very non-violent uh, and helpful manner and loving manner. And so I don't believe there are any times when a person should be restricted or should be put in a room or should be pushed into a process that they obviously do not want to engage before, and you know that they do not want to engage before you begin. Now, have I ever personally restricted the will of another? Uh, yes, I have personally restricted the will of another. For example, if a child comes up to me and hits me, the very first action I will take is I'll hold their arms and legs and I'll just continue holding them while telling them that it was wrong for them to hit me and I will continue to restrict that child and restrict that child for as long as it takes for that child to go through its rage and its anger and all of the other emotions that it has and gets to tears and then I will let the restriction go. That is the only time that I have personally restricted anybody and restricted anybody's behaviour. The reason why I do that is I am trying to teach the child that certain behaviour which is violent is unloving and therefore unwelcome to anybody else in society and a restriction placed upon the child is a way of informing the child that they cannot do this or take this action in the future. And if I continue to hold the child while they go through their rage and other experiences and they get to the point where they grieve about what, what they have done, then I know that they are now in the process of releasing the reason why they did it and therefore I can let the child go. And that is the only time that I have personally restricted anybody on the planet. <laughs>